Hello everyone. I welcome you all to the another revision lecture for NEET for chemistry. And in this particular session, we will be focusing our discussion on important chapters like general organic chemistry and hydrocarbons. So we'll be dealing with certain questions and through those questions we'll be revising our concepts. So now let us have a look at the very first question here which is actually dealing with the stability of the carbocations. Now in organic chemistry precisely general organic chemistry you may expect certain questions which are based on stability of uh, you know carbon intermediates. So you could have carbocations you could have carbon ions, you could have carbon free radicals as well, right? So, so here we'll be dealing with certain questions wherein we have to arrange in increasing or decreasing order of the stability. So the question here is, as I told you, uh, these are the three different carbocations which have been given to you and they're asking us to arrange them in the increasing or decreasing order. So basically I need to determine the stability, okay? Now, Remember one thing, whenever we talk about, whenever we are dealing with the stability of carbocations, whenever we want to determine the stability of the carbocations, there are three major factors which will come into play, all right? So I'm sure all of you must be knowing this. So one of them is basically inductive effect, right? The second one is hyperconjugation. And obviously one more is nothing but the resonance. Okay, now very, very important thing. If suppose in a particular molecule, you are, you know, coming across all the three effects, you know, taking place. So you will be given higher priority always to the resonance effect. So resonance effect will have a greater impact on determining the stability of the carbocations. So resonance, followed by hyperconjugation, which obviously deals with the alpha hydrogen atoms and finally inductive effect. So this is going to be the order. So resonance effect, first you will look for, next is hyperconjugation and finally you are going to have inductive effect, okay. So generally for all these stability orders, please keep this into your mind. Now if you look at the very first carbocation here, it's actually a benzyl carbocation, right? So basically if you notice here, you are having this particular positive charge, right? And obviously the CH2 group is attached to benzene So this positive charge alternate pi bond. You can see here that there is a positive charge alternate pi bond. So without any doubt, we can clearly see here that this positive charge can be delocalized, right? And it can be delocalized with the help of the resonance, isn't it? So the major effect which will come into play for this particular carbocation is nothing but the resonance. So I can say that this particular carbocation that is benzyl carbocation is resonance stabilized. Isn't it? Simple, straightforward. And of course you can, you can have different resonating structures. I'll just give you one of the way. So if I consider here you're having a positive charge, alternate double bonds here, right? So let's suppose if these electrons, they shift here, so it's a resonating structure, definitely is going to be like this. A double bond here, double bond here, positive charge, CH2, right? And of course, this positive charge will keep on rotating inside this ring, right? And in other words, we can say it is resonance stabilized, right? So the first carbocation, which you can see here, is resonance stabilized. Moving forward to the next carbocation here. Now, if you notice here, definitely there is a pi bond. There are pi electrons involved and there is a positive charge as well. But the problem is they're not alternate to each other. So in this particular structure, you may not be able to see resonance effect. However, if you notice that this particular carbocation is a secondary carbocation, wherein it is connected to both the sides by the, the carbon atoms or alkyl groups here, right? So there definitely you're going to have plus I effect of these alkyl groups as well as, as well as, if you notice, two hydrogen atoms here and three hydrogen atoms here, right? So we can consider these to be what alpha hydrogen atoms which are connected to, you know, the carbon atoms next to the carbocation. 
So here you are going to have the effect of hyperconjugation as well, right? So this could be the, you know, relatively more stable structure, but not as high st stability as the first one. Okay. Now, if you look at the third one, third carbocation, you can see here that it is this particular carbon is primary and hence this is a primary carbocation. Right? Now, if I am considering that this to be a primary carbocation, there is going to be only the inductive effect which will come into play here from these alkyl groups, right? Which eventually go towards here, right? And in this particular case, you are going to have inductive as well as hyperconjugation and obviously the first case you are having got resonance, right? So I told you that resonance stabilized structure will have highest or maximum stability, okay? So we can definitely see here that option A will be your correct answer. That is the first carbocation is the most stable than second than third, right? All right. So moving on with the next question here. Again, a similar question, but with different structures. They're asking you, what is the decreasing order of stability of the following carbocations, right? Now again here, if you notice, you have been given different carbocations, five different structures have been given to you. You ha have to simply identify them. Now one thing is very much clear that in all these structures, there are no pi electrons because all are single bonds, right? So none of these structures is actually will be stabilized by resonance structures or resonance uh, effect, right? So resonance effect is ruled out from all these structures. So now we are left with hyperconjugation as well as the inductive effect, okay? Now, if you notice here, this particular carbocation is the primary carbocation, right? This is primary carbocation and here, because this is CH2 group, in this particular structure, it is going to have two alpha hydrogen atoms. It is going to have two alpha hydrogen atoms. In the second structure, first and foremost thing, it is the secondary carbocation, right? And now to both the sides, it is connected to the methyl groups, right? And because there are methyl groups present, we can say overall, there will be six alpha hydrogen atoms, six alpha hydrogen atoms, right? And definitely there is going to be plus I effect, okay, of the ethyl group. You can say here also there is going to be plus I effect of the two methyl groups. Now in this case, if you notice, this is first of all the tertiary carbocation, right? And all the more. Uh, it is attached to three methyl groups. So we can say that this particular structure has nine alpha hydrogen atoms, right? And uh, it is going to have very high plus I effect because from all the sides, all the three methyl groups are donating their electrons, right? The fourth structure again is an example of the primary carbocation, right? And this also has two alpha hydrogen atoms and definitely there is going to be plus I effect from the alkyl groups. And finally, if you look at this particular structure, now this is a secondary carbocation, right? So this is a secondary carbocation. And on either side, if you notice, it is connected to CH2 and CH2. So in short, it is going to have four alpha hydrogen atoms, right? Four alpha hydrogen atoms. And of course, there are there is going to be what inductive effect from both the sides, right? So here everywhere you will be able to find the inductive effect because of these alkyl groups, right? So one thing is very much clear of all these structures, if you notice the structure three has maximum number of alpha hydrogen atoms, nine alpha hydrogen atoms. And that's the reason it is going to show maximum number of hyperconjugable structure, right? And that's the reason definitely it is going to have maximum stability, right? So without any doubt, structure number three will have maximum stability, right? Next, if you notice structure number two here has total of six alpha hydrogen atoms. So definitely there'll be more number of hyperconjugal structures. So uh, after third structure, it is going to be the second structure, which is going to be more stable. Next, out of first, fourth and fifth structure, you will realize that the fifth structure is having four alpha hydrogen atoms, right? That means four hyperconjugable structures. So definitely the structure number five will have a, a higher stability here. Now we have to decide between structure number one and four. Now, if you notice both the cases, there are two alpha hydrogen atoms, yes or no? 
and both of them they are showing what plus i effect. However, if you notice here in this particular case, the plus i effect will be relatively predominant compared to just this particular group. Yes or no? And that's the reason we can say structure 4 will have a higher stability compared to structure 1. So basically, this becomes the order, right? And if you can identify this particular order from these options given, so we can say option B will be your correct answer. Yeah, so I hope you are able to understand when to take which type of effects. In this particular case, it was hyperconjugation. It was hyperconjugation, which was predominant, right? And on that basis, we determine the stabilities of these carbocations. Yeah, all right. So moving on with the next structure here again, this is based on the stability of the carbocations itself. However, here we are dealing with the benzyl carbocation to which you are having chlorine which is attached. So chlorine is present on the ortho position, chlorine is at the meta position and chlorine at the para position. Now, we need to understand here that whenever you have any halogen which is attached to the benzene ring, okay, it is going to have, suppose if I consider here halogen atom X, okay, it is going to have plus M effect and minus I effect, okay, plus M effect and minus I effect. Now, if you look at these structures, the structure in which the positive charge will be most stabilized will be having higher stability, yes or no, simple, straightforward, correct? Now, if we try to draw the resonating structures here for this particular carbocation, para chloro benzyl carbocation, okay, right? Now we know that chlorine has six electrons, three lone pairs of electrons. These electrons could be given here so that, you know, the resonating structures will continue. So now if I write it's another resonating structure, it's going to be like this. There is going to be a double bond here, right? There will be electrons here, negative, uh, double bond, double bond, and of course here you are going to have CH2 with a positive charge, yes or no, right? And because chlorine has given its electrons, we can say it may acquire a positive charge here, right? Now, this negative charge will rotate inside this ring, right? So now, another possibility is that these electrons can shift here so that these electrons will shift here, right? So I can say here that there's a double bond here, there is a double bond here, and there will be a double bond here, right? Now, because this double bond is coming here, we can say it is CH2 with no positive charge, right? And of course, you will have double bond Cl with a positive charge. And likewise, the, the, uh, you know, the process will continue. So this particular negative charge will get delocalized, right? It will get delocalized. Now, if you notice here, because chlorine is giving its electrons to the benzene ring, it is showing plus M effect and because of which the positive charge on CH2 group is delocalized completely. And in fact, it is more stabilized when the electrons are coming at the para position, right? Yeah. So I can clearly say here that if the chlorine is present at the para position, first of all, it will be able to stabilize the positive charge and all the more because it is away from CH2 group, the, the, the steric hindrance effect will be lesser. Right, and that's the reason we can say that the para isomer here will be most stabilized, followed by obviously ortho. Because if the chlorine is present at the ortho position, it will show similar increase in electron density at the ortho as well as para position. Right, so you will realize here that of all these structures, it is structure number three which is having higher stability than first one and finally the second one. Now, in the second one, what is happening is, if the chlorine is at the meta position, it will not be able to stabilize the positive charge. It will not be able to stabilize the positive charge, okay? Because it is going to increase the electron density at the ortho position as well as the para position, right? So none of these positions are actually coinciding with the position of the CH2 group, CH2 with the positive charge, right? So that's the reason. From this conclusion, you know, from this discussion, we can say that option D will be your correct answer. Third, then first, and finally, the second one, right? So these were certain questions based on the stability of the carbocations, right? Now, 
This is a similar question, but now here instead of carbocation, we are dealing with carbon ions. Okay, stability of carbon ion. Now, when it comes to the stability of carbon ion, again you have to take into consideration the resonating structures as well as the the inductive effect. Remember, hyperconjugation will not have much of an impact as far as the stability of carbon ions is concerned, right? Now again here you are having one benzyl carbon ion and on to which you are having the substitution by NO2 group. Now we know that this NO2 group, okay NO2 group is electron withdrawing group first of all. So it is going to show minus I effect. All the more it takes up the electrons from the benzene and because of which it is strongly ringed deactivating. So it is going to be showing minus M effect as well, right? And of these effect, the minus M effect of NO2 will be predominant. Minus M effect of NO2 group is going to be what? Predominant, remember this. Now here, because we are dealing with the stability of carbon ion, right? We have to have a group which actually decreases the negative charge density on the carbon. Now here nitro group definitely it is going to pull the electrons from the benzene ring and that's how it is going to pull the electron from the negative charge. So basically from the carbon, right? And that's the reason we can say that if NO2 group is present on the ortho position or at the para position, if it is present at the ortho position or at the para position, then it will be able to stabilize the negative charge to a greater extent, right? So if I consider here the structure, like for example, CH2 group, right? So here you are having CH2 with a negative charge and of course here you are having what N double bond O, right? Clear? So what is happening is these electrons can get shifted here so that these electrons will shift here. Yes or no? Right? Now because of that what will happen is because you know the electrons being shifted its resonating structure is going to be like this. So positive charge on this carbon double bond N single bond O single bond O and of course you are having CH2 group here. Right? And it will go on. Now the point here is NO2 group at the ortho position will be able to stabilize this negative charge in a better way. Why? Because it is more closer to the negative charge first of all and it will be able to pull the electrons because CH2 with the negative charge here is at the ortho position of NO2 group, right? Correct? So it will have its more impact at that particular position. So the first structure will be most stabilized followed by the third one because NO2 again is at the para position and finally obviously meta position, right? So here we can say that option D will be the correct answer. Why? Because NO2 group being closer it will be able to pull the electrons strongly from CH2 group and it will decrease the electron density around CH2 group, right? So I hope this is very much clear. Now moving on with the next structure here. Again, if we consider here stability of the carbon ions, right? Now I have told you to determine the stability of these carbon ions or carbocations or free radicals, you look for resonance or hyperconjugation or inductive effect, okay? Now, if you have a close look at these three structures here, right? It is actually a cyclopentanone, but there is an ether group also which is associated with cyclopentanone in the first case as well as in the second, uh, third case, right? However, in the second case, it is just a cyclopantenone structure, first of all, right? And there is a negative charge which is associated with one of the carbon of these structures. So basically, it is a carbocation, right? Now, let's try to figure out that in which of these structures, you know, uh, the negative charge will be most stabilized. Now, first and foremost thing, let's have a look at just cyclopentanone here, right? Just cyclopentanone and of course, here you are having a negative charge, right? Now, we can clearly see here that this negative charge alternate pi electrons or pi bonds, 
right? So there is a possibility of what? Resonance, simple, straightforward. So if there is a possibility of resonance, we can say here that these electrons, they can get shifted here so that these electrons will shift onto oxygen, right? And hence, we can say here that the negative charge is delocalized on oxygen atom which is relatively more electronegative, yes or no, okay? Okay, this is with respect to uh, cyclopentanone carbon, carbon ion. Now, if I consider the first and the third one, let's have a look at the first structure here. There is a negative charge here, obviously with the electrons, right? Now, you will realize here that here, there is a lone pair of electrons, the negative charge alternate pi bond. So these two definitely they are in conjugation and they can undergo resonance, right? All the more, lone pair alternate pi bond, right? These are also because they are alternate to each other, they are capable of undergoing resonance. So here from this particular case, you can get around two resonating structures, right? If I consider the third one, Right? There is a negative charge here. Now, no doubt here that, you know, uh, this particular oxygen, this oxygen is in alternate with the pi electrons, without any doubt, right? So definitely these can show resonance. However, because this particular lone pair of electrons or the negative charge is not in conjugation with the pi electrons, we cannot have these, you know, uh, negative charges being delocalized. So this negative charge cannot get delocalized here, right? So if you notice here, in the second structure, the delocalization of the negative charge takes place in the first structure also it is possible, but not in the third structure. That's the reason we can say that the stability wise, the second structure is going to be the most stable, followed by the first one and finally the third one, right? So that's the reason we can say here that option D should be your correct answer. Yeah. So in all these type of questions, please stay focused on which type of effects could be arising into these different structures, right? Okay. Moving on with the next structure, next set of questions. The inductive effect of chlorine operates in. So these are the different structures given to you. So just one is simple one chloropropane. The second structure is actually a conjugated system with chlorine at the terminal carbon and finally next is chlorobenzene. Now we know that <coughs> halogens show inductive effect and they actually pull the electrons from the, the positive center, right? So definitely here it can show minus I effect. No doubt because here there is a conjugation so chlorine obviously has a lone pair of electrons and these electrons can undergo conjugation like this, right? There's possibility. However, it also shows minus I effect in this case. And here also, because chlorine has the lone pairs of electrons, it can donate its lone pair of electrons and it will keep rotating inside the structure. So in second and third case, it is showing plus M effect as well. Remember, here it is showing plus M effect. Here also it is showing plus M effect, but in both the cases, it is showing minus I effect as well, right? And as I told you, for halogens, just remember for halogens, it's minus I effect predominates over plus M. This is the only exception which you should be knowing. Generally, as I told you, it is the resonance which has a higher priority. But in case of halogens, just remember minus I predominates over uh, the plus M effect. That's the reason in all the three cases, chlorine, can have its minus I effect operating, okay? And that's the reason your answer here should be option D, right? Okay, moving on with the next question. Okay, the most stable canonical structure among the following is, now here, these three structures which are given to you, they are all resonating structures, okay? These three are all resonating structures. 
Now, we have to determine of all these three resonating structures, which is the most stable. Okay. Now, always remember, there are certain criteria with respect to major and minor contributors towards the resonating structures. Right. And if you want to determine the stability of these canonical or resonating structures, the first and foremost thing which you need to look for is the total number of pi bonds. Okay, or pi electrons. That is point number one. Okay, if all the structures have the equal number of pi bonds, then then you move on to the next criteria. You have to make sure that the octet of the uh, atoms is complete. Okay, octet of the atoms is complete, right? And then you move on with the uh, you know positive and negative charges. So the like charges should be away from each other, and unlike charges should be close to each other. Okay, so these are certain criteria. So the like charges away from each other and the unlike charges close to each other. Okay. So these are some of the points which you should be considering when you are determining the stability of the resonating structures, right? Now, have a look here. In the first structure, in the first structure, how many pi bonds are present? There is only one pi bond. Okay. Is the octet of all the atoms complete? No. This particular carbon has a positive charge, so definitely its octet is not complete. Okay. Moving on to the next, this structure has also one pi bond, right? And the octet is not complete. Here, in the third structure, there are two pi bonds. Two pi bonds. So, because it is having more number of pi bonds, that means it is going to show higher stability. Remember that. Definitely here also oxygen does not have its octet complete. But what is happening is because of presence of two pi bonds, structure number three will have additional stability. Okay. So, of all these resonating structures, of all these canonical structures, we can say that structure three has got higher stability and that is the reason option C will be your correct answer. Okay. Please note down these criteria. Okay, Very important, uh, pi bonds, the octet of the atoms, the like charges should be away from each other, unlike charges should be closer to each other. So in any, any of the resonating structures, whenever they are asking you and they are asking you the major contributors, please keep these points in your mind. All right, the next question here. The correct stability order of the following compounds. Now again, here they are asking you about stability, but here we have to look at this particular point in different context because if you notice here in all these three structures, okay, if you see all these three structures, structure number one is a carbocation, it is having a positive charge. Structure number two is neutral, but structure number three, because it is having a negative charge, we say it is carbonyl, right? So basically all the three here, they are combined and we have to determine the stabilities. Now, whenever you come across such kind of questions, you have to deal with something which you call as conjugation and you have to look for uh, aromaticity as well, okay. Now, I am sure all of you know what, what are the criteria to determine the aromaticity, right. So if you want to have aromaticity, That means when, when a compound can be regarded as aromatic, first and foremost thing, it should have 4n plus 2 pi electrons, right? There should be a ring current, which means uh, all the electrons, pi electrons should be delocalized. All the atoms, in fact, should be involved in delocalization. And finally, the structure should be a planar molecule, planar molecule, okay? So if all these conditions are met, we say that the structure is aromatic. Right? Now, if the structure has just 4n pi electrons, right, it is showing ring current and it is a planar molecule. Okay? The only difference if you notice here, instead of 4n plus 2 pi electrons, I have written here 4n electrons. If these conditions are met, then we say it is anti-aromatic. Okay, 
and if none of these conditions are met then we can say it is simply non aromatic right now if you look at the first structure here it is having two pi electrons right it is having two pi electrons and there is definitely a positive charge now definitely you can see here that this particular positive charge is in alternate with the pi bonds here pi electrons so is there a possibility of resonance here definitely yes correct so we can say here that one of the possible resonating structure here could be there is a positive charge here so if let's suppose these electrons shift here so now its resonating structure is going to be this right so there is going to be a positive charge here there is going to be a double bond and there is going to be a double bond here right so so there is a complete delocalization happening however does it have 4n plus 2 pi electrons answer is no it just has 4 pi electrons because it is having 4 pi electrons it will definitely fall into this category moreover it is there is a ring current delocalization happening and it is a planar molecule right so we can definitely say that structure number one here is basically anti aromatic structure right anti aromatic structure now structure number two there are four pi electrons which are present but there is no charge here and this particular carbon is going to be what sp3 hybridized now because it is sp3 hybridized we can say that overall structure also may not be planar and all the more uh, it is not going to take part into any of the conjugated system right so we can say that this particular structure could be non aromatic okay right and finally here you are having these lone pairs of electrons okay and they are in conjugation with these double bonds these pi electrons right and definitely they can undergo resonance so this will this structure number 3 is also going to show resonance and all the more if you notice total number of pi electrons now here will be 2 plus 2 plus 2 that means 6 so definitely it falls into this category that means structure number 3 is going to be aromatic okay structure number 3 is going to be aromatic right now when it comes to stability of these aromatic structures non aromatic structures and anti aromatic structures just remember that aromatic will have higher stability okay aromatic will have a higher stability followed by non aromatic remember and finally anti aromatic okay right so if we consider this particular order we can clearly see that the third one is most stable followed by the second one and finally the first one okay so here we can say that option c is your correct answer i hope you got the clear understanding likewise they can ask any question which is based on uh, you know these uh, stability orders so the way we have discussed for cyclopentane uh, that cyclopentadiene likewise you can also talk the variation of this particular compound cyclopropane so just neutral then one with a positive charge and one with a negative charge okay so you guys can try on your own and then see which one is going to be relatively more stable so in such cases please take into account the aromaticity of a particular given organic compound right okay now moving on with the next question here you have been given these four reactions and you have been given their corresponding enthalpy changes okay corresponding enthalpy changes have been given to you now what they're asking you here the question is of all these reactions how will you compare these different enthalpy changes right now in the first case it is simply chlorine which is attached to a cyclohexane ring cyclohexane it is it is uh, having no double bond no pi electrons as such okay in the second case there is a double bond here which is present at the second carbon in the third case it is obviously benzyl chloride and finally you are having a chlorobenzene structure here now if you notice in all these structures what is happening is the bond between carbon and chlorine is getting broken the bond between carbon and chlorine is getting broken right now if this bond is broken chlorine takes away its electrons basically it is heterolytic bond uh, dissociation and hence this carbon will have a positive charge so in all the cases if you notice there are positive charges which are present right 
So here also you have a positive charge. Here also there is a positive charge. This is obviously benzyl carbocation and this is phenyl carbocation. Now, the question mark is which of these reactions will release maximum amount of heat energy? Now, what, when do you think that any particular reaction will release maximum amount of heat energy when the system becomes stable, right? When the product is going to be stable. So in other words, if you notice in all these cases, we have to talk in the context of the stability of the intermediates which are formed here, right? So here you are having just cyclohexyl carbocation. Here you are again having cyclohexyl carbocation, but obviously there's a double bond here. This is benzyl carbocation and this is phenyl carbocation, correct? Now, I'm very much sure that you will be able to say here that of all these carbocations, all these structures, benzyl carbocation is the most stable one. Why? Because the positive charge is completely delocalized due to resonance. Right? Now, if I'm saying that it is completely delocalized because of resonance, definitely it is going to be more stable. And if it is most stable, obviously it is going to release maximum amount of energy here. Right? It is going to release what? Maximum amount of energy. So without any doubt, we can say that delta H03 will have higher value. In fact, maximum value. Okay. All right. Moving on to the next set of structures here. If you notice in the second structure, here you are having a positive charge, which is in conjugation with the pi electrons. Now the question mark is, can it show resonance? Definitely yes. These electrons can shift here. So it's a resonating structure. Another resonating structure here is going to be like this, correct? So this is also resonance stabilized, but not, you know, as stabilized as the benzyl carbocation. Yet, because it is relatively stable, the amount of energy released is also going to be higher, right? So after delta H naught 3, it should be delta H naught 2, which will release more amount of energy, okay? Now we have to determine between first and fourth one. Now the first one you can see here, it is cyclohexyl carbocation and next one is phenyl. Now without any doubt of these two, you will realize that the phenyl carbocation is least stable. Okay, it is not having maximum stability here. See presence of alternate double bonds here does not guarantee that yes, this positive charge would be delocalized. No, it wouldn't be, right? However, here, this particular positive charge, also it is not uh, stabilized because of resonance, but because there is a presence of electron donating groups, first of all CH2, CH2 groups, and it is having four alpha hydrogen atoms. So it is going to show four hyperconjugable structures. So without any doubt, cyclohexyl carbocation is going to be more stable compared to phenyl carbocation, right? So because of that, we can say that delta H03 will be having a maximum uh, energy value, energy release, then delta H02, then delta H01, and finally delta H04. So if you look at all these options, you will realize that option number three, option C is going to be your correct answer. I hope you got the logical reasoning behind solving this kind of question, right? Okay. Moving on with the next one. Rank the following compounds in order of decreasing acidic strength decreasing acidic strength here, right? Now, first and foremost thing, if you notice, except for the second structure, rest of the three structures are phenols and their derivatives, right? So if I basically consider this one, OH, right? And you are having nitro group attached at the meta position in structure number one, in structure number three, NO2 is attached at the para position. In structure number four, there is no substituent which is present, right? And structure number two is just cyclohexyl alcohol here, okay? Now, the acidic strength here, please remember it depends on the stability of the conjugate base which is produced, okay? What I mean is, if this dissociates, let's suppose if this phenol dissociates, what are we going to get here? It is going to be a phenoxide ion, right? So it is going to be phenoxide ion with a negative charge and of course H plus, right? Now, if this negative charge on phenoxide ion is stabilized, 
then we can say this conjugate base will be more stable and if this base is more stable then this acid will be a stronger acid. That is a simple idea which you should be knowing. Okay. Now we have seen, we have studied this that the presence of electron withdrawing groups, presence of electron withdrawing groups on the benzene ring in phenol will actually increase the acidic strength. They will actually increase the acidic strength. Why? Because they will be able to delocalize this negative charge to a greater extent. Okay, they'll be able to stabilize the negative charge. Okay, so you will realize that in structure number three and in structure number one, there are nitro groups which are present and these nitro groups, they show minus I effect, minus M effect. It will show, in this case, it will show only minus I because it's minus M may not be that much uh, of impact. Why? Because it at the meta position. Yet, it is strongly electron withdrawing group. So, without any doubt, we can say here that in structure number 3, because NO2 group is at the para position, its minus M effect predominates and that's the reason it will be able to stabilize the negative charge in oxygen to a greater extent. And hence, para nitrophenol will be having maximum acidic strength amongst these four, right? So, without any doubt, after third structure, it is going to be the first one wherein NO2 group is present at the meta position. Because of its minus I effect, it will be able to stabilize the negative charge. So after th third, it is first one, right? Now we have to determine between the second structure and the fourth structure. Now definitely, if you notice here, in the fourth structure, even though there is no group which is present, we can say just phenoxide ion may be resonance stabilized, okay? Phenoxide ion will be just resonance stabilized. But the problem with the second structure here is that there is no resonance stability, right? This particular negative charge. So if I, if I just draw the conjugate base of this cyclohexyl alcohol here, right? If I remove this H plus, so it is going to have a negative charge. Now this negative charge will not be stabilized. In fact, because of the alkyl groups, they'll be pushing the electrons towards oxygen and because of which the negative charge density will increase and hence it will make it a little unstable. So of all these structures, structure number three, maximum acidic strength followed by the first one, then the fourth one and finally the second one. And that's the reason your answer here should be D, right? I hope it is very much clear. Okay, moving on to the next question here. Now, the earlier question which we had seen was with respect to the acidic strength. Here, this particular question is with respect to the basic strength. And generally, remember, when we talk about the basic strength in organic compounds, we deal with nitrogen, most of the cases, okay? And we know that nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons, so we have to look at the electron donating tendency of nitrogen. Now, you realize that you know these are the four structures which are given to you, okay? And we have to comment on the basic strength of these four structures. So what we need to do is we actually boil down our discussion to the fact that in whichever structure the lone pair of electrons of nitrogen will be available for donating it to the H plus ions or any acidic medium, then it will be a stronger base, okay? So now let's have a look here, first of all. This nitrogen definitely has a lone pair. This nitrogen has a lone pair. This nitrogen has a lone pair. And of course, this nitrogen has a lone pair of electrons. Okay. Now, if you look at in the first structure here, this particular nitrogen is sp3 hybridized. It is sp3 hybridized. And it is connected to CH2, CH2 groups on either side, which are electron donating group, right? So, it is going to have a plus I effect because of the alkyl groups and also because it is oxygen, it may also have a bit of impact of minus I effect, okay? Yet, you know, these lone pairs of electrons which are present on nitrogen, they are not bound to any resonating structures or they are not involved in any, uh, any particular conjugated system. And hence, these lone pairs of electrons are available to be given to the H plus ions, okay? They're available to be given to the H plus ions and hence it will show 
definitely a basic strand. Okay. Now the next structure, if you notice here, it's pyridine. In pyridine, the hybridization of this nitrogen is actually sp2. Okay. And the lone pairs of electrons of this nitrogen that are actually present in these sp2 hybrid orbitals. Remember that. And because they are present in sp2 hybrid orbitals, these electrons are actually perpendicular to these p orbitals of carbon. These p orbitals of carbon. Okay. Now, because of that, we can say that these lone pairs of electrons of nitrogen are not involved in resonating structures. They are not involved in the resonating structures. Okay. In fact, they can be given easily to the H plus ions, right? So, we can say here that here the lone pairs of electrons are not involved in resonating or resonance basically, right? Now, because they are not involved, definitely they can be given to what? The acidic medium, correct? Okay, moving on to the structure of aniline here. Now, nitrogen definitely has a lone pair of electrons, but definitely it can undergo conjugation. It can undergo resonance with these electrons, pi electrons. And because it undergoes resonance, its pi electrons are not readily available to be given to what H plus ions. And hence, we can say its basic strength will be a little less. And finally, one more thing here. Now, without any doubt, this car nitrogen is sp3 hybridized and this nitrogen also is, you will realize that it is going to be sp3 hybridized. Now, the point here is these lone pairs of electrons on nitrogen, okay, they will be present into the conjugated system, right? And that's how it will make it stable. So if you notice in structure C and structure D, the lone pairs of electrons of nitrogen, they are not available for donating, right? Clear? However, in structure A as well as structure B, definitely yes, nitrogen can donate its lone pair of electrons, but in case of structure A, you know, it will be able to donate more easily. Why? Because it is singly bonded to the carbon atoms, loosely bonded and the electrons can be easily given out. Okay. So A definitely has maximum basic strength than B. Okay. Now let's decide between C and D. Now if you notice in both the cases, the lone pairs of electrons because they are involved in resonance, okay, they are not available for donating to what H plus ions. However, just imagine, suppose even if I am not keeping this NH2 group here, Will it affect the aromaticity of this benzene ring? Answer is no. Okay. However, if I don't keep this nitrogen, if there are no lone pairs of electrons on this nitrogen, will this structure be aromatic? No. So to maintain the aromaticity of this structure, this nitrogen must give its electron into the resonance. Okay. So this is like here, these no lone pairs of electrons are definitely not at all available because they are part of a resonance. However, here to a certain extent of, you know, in comparison to this, to a certain extent, these lone pairs of electrons could be available, right? That's the reason structure C will be having a little higher basic strength compared to structure D, okay? So definitely here we can say that option D is your correct answer. I hope you got the clear understanding. So whenever they're explaining uh, or they're asking any question which is based on the basic strength, please talk in the context of electron donating capacity, electron donating capacity, okay? All right, moving on. Now here, uh, again, they're asking you to find the strongest acid amongst these. So here you are having the formic acid, ethanoic acid, benzoic acid, and para chlorobenzoic acid, okay? Now, definitely, uh, when I consider this acidic group, C double bond O, O with a negative charge, now this is uh, the conjugate base system and it is resonance stabilized. So definitely we can say here that it is C, single bond O, single bond O and there is a negative charge, yes? So if there is electron donating group which is attached to this particular conjugated system, right, electron donating group, it will destabilize the negative charge and hence it will decrease the acidic strength. On the other hand, if you are having electron withdrawing group attached to this carbon, it will stabilize the negative charge, okay? 
So in the first case, if you notice, it is HCOOH. Second case is what CH3COH. Now CH3COH, it shows plus I effect. And because it is showing plus I effect, definitely it is not going to show a higher acidic strength. Nor is the case with this formic acid, right? So now we have to decide between C and D. Now in C, you are having a definitely benzoic acid, but in D, you are having what? Chlorine, which is present at the para position of this benzoic acid. Now, we have seen that in case of halogens, they show minus I effect and they show plus M effect, correct? And minus I effect will be relatively more predominant for halogens. And because of which, they will be able to, you know, this minus, because of this minus I effect of chlorine, the negative charge on this carboxylate ion will be relatively more stabilized because electrons, you know, chlorine is pulling the electrons. And that's the reason we can say that option D will be a correct answer here. So para-chlorobenzoic acid is going to be a stronger acid compared to just benzoic acid because of predominant minus I effect of chlorine here, right? So whenever uh, you have to answer with respect to the stability or acidic or basic strength of the compounds, please determine the relative stability of the corresponding conjugate acids or bases. Okay, so the, the acid which is, or the conjugate acid which is going to be more stable, its corresponding base will be stronger base. And vice versa is also true, right? So these were certain questions based on, uh, you know, determining the acidic or basic strength. Moving on with the next question here. Which of the following has the highest heat of hydrogenation? Now again, um, very important question here. Highest heat of hydrogenation. So if we consider any particular alkene and you are adding hydrogen to it, what happens is hydrogen obviously gets added across and delta H value you will be able to measure. Now this delta H value is something which you call as heat of hydrogenation. And generally it is negative. Okay, now just remember if the alkene is more stable, if the alkene is more stable then the energy content of that particular alkene is going to be lesser. And if the energy content is lesser, so when hydrogen gets added across, the amount of energy released will also be what lesser, right? So the point which I want to make here is, if we want to determine the stability of alkenes on the basis of heat of hydrogenation, then they're inversely related to each other. So stability wise, stability of alkenes, it is inversely related to enthalpy or heat of hydrogenation, okay, right? So now if you notice here, first structure is ethene, second is obviously butuanine, isobutylene and finally tetramethylethylene, okay? So ethene structure you already know, butuanine is CH3, CH, single uh, CH2, CH, double bond CH2, this is butuanine. Isobutylene is CH3, C, CH3, double bond CH2. And finally, tetramethylethylene is basically C double bond C, CH3, 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 right? Now, if you notice in all these structures, this particular structure is most uh, substituted. Doubly bonded carbon atoms are most substituted. And that's the reason it is going to be having what maximum stability, okay? And if it is having maximum stability, obviously its heat of hydrogenation is going to be least, right? On the other hand, if you notice here, ethene, it is not at all substituted, okay? Hydrogen atoms are not substituted here. Now, because it is least substituted of all, right? We can say that it is least stable of all. And if it is least stable of all, we can say that its heat of hydrogenation is maximum, right? So that's the reason. Option A should be your correct answer here. That is nothing but ethene. So please remember, if they're giving you different alkenes and along with that, they're giving you different heats of hydrogenation of those alkenes, then the one with the maximum value of uh, heat of hydrogenation will be having least stability and vice versa. So this particular question, they can ask you in a different way as well with respect to stability point of view. Yes? All right. The next question here is, how many geometrical isomers of this compound are possible? Now, this is relatively simpler question, 
uh, based on the geometrical isomerism, we just have to identify the cis trans isomers, okay. Now, you will realize here that there is a double bond which is present between these two carbon atoms and there is a double bond which is present between these two carbon atoms, right. So, there could be two possibilities for each of these double bonds, yes. There could be two possibilities for each of these double bonds to show cis or trans isomers, right. So, if I draw one of the structure here, it will be C double bond C H H this is C H 2 C H 3 this will be C H double bond C H C H 3, right. So, with respect to this double bond, you are having this as a trans isomer and you could also have cis isomer. Now, exactly similar way you could also have with respect to this double bond as well, right. So, in total you could have four different isomers, right, two for cis and two for trans isomers. So, definitely our answer is C here. The next question here, again geometrical isomers, but here the question is cyclodecene, okay. Now, how to determine the geometrical isomers here? So, the options which are given to you are 0, 2, 3 or 4. Now, if you, if you have a close look at this particular structure itself, you know, this particular structure, across this double bond, across this double bond, okay, if there is a hydrogen present here, there is hydrogen present here, that means these two groups, which are higher priority groups, they are on the same side. So, the structure which is given to us is, it's, it's in fell a cis isomer. Okay, it is basically what a cis isomer. However, suppose if I just shift the position of this double bond here, okay. So, if I draw the structure, right. Now, let's suppose I am showing the double bond position here. So, now hydrogen is here, this hydrogen is here, this hydrogen is here and these two high priority groups if you see here, these two high priority groups, they are actually trans to each other, opposite to each other, yes or no? And that's the reason this particular isomer will be trans and this is basically cis. So, in short, you could definitely have two isomers here, which are possible, right? So, I hope you got the clear understanding about the certain questions are based on isomerism as well, right? So, we have discussed few questions based on stability of carbocations, carbon ions, then acidic strength, basic strength aromaticity as well, right, okay. So, I am moving on with the next few more questions here pertaining to hydrocarbons. So, in the following sequence of the reactions, the alkene gives a compound B, okay. This is the compound B. They are asking us what is the compound B here. Now, this is very simple question. The alkene here is nothing but butene, right? It is butene. And whenever you are dealing with the ozonolysis of alkene, it's very simple. You just have to break this double bond and across this double bond put oxygen atoms, right? So, suppose if I am considering here CH3CH double bond CHCH3, okay, right? This is butene. Now, to identify the final products here, break this, what you do is CH3, CH, double bond O, C, double bond O, H and of course, CH3, simple, straightforward, okay. So, in this de case, definitely you will realize that you are getting two ethanol molecules, right, two ethanol molecules and that's the reason option D is your correct answer, CH3, CHO. By the way, what will be your compound A here? So, we can say here compound A is nothing but CH3, CH, single bond O, single bond C, again H, O, O and of course, CH3. This is ozonide and this on hydrolysis will give you compound B which is nothing but ethanol in this case, clear, okay. Moving on with the next question, which of the following reactions will yield 2 comma 2 dibromopropane, 2 comma 2 dibromopropane. So, first here is propyne, 
reacting with two moles of HBr. The second, you're, you're having one bromo prop one in. Again, it is reacting with HBr, so already one bromine is there. Second, uh, the third one is ethyne reacting with HBr. And finally, you are, you are having propene reacting with HBr. Now, one thing is very much clear, option C cannot be the correct answer because there are only two carbon atoms present in ethyne, okay? So, we cannot write that as an answer. And option D, if you see, you are treating propene with HBr. So, there is addition of only one mole of uh, HBr. So, it will give rise to what? CH3, CH, Br, CH3, as per Markovnikov addition, right? So, you are just getting one bromo prop, uh, sorry, two bromo propane here in this case. So, definitely this is also not the correct answer. Now, if you look at option A and option B. Now, in option A, you are having a propyne which is combining with what HBr molecules, right? So, here addition takes place as per Markovnikov rule. So, if I consider the first reaction, so CH3, C, triple bond CH plus HBr. Now, as per Markovnikov addition, the negative part of the reagent will go to that carbon which has least number of hydrogen, right? So, across this triple bond, obviously, this carbon has least number of hydrogen. So, this bromine goes to this carbon. So, obviously, hydrogen will go to this carbon. In short, one of the possible uh, first product here is CH3CBr double bond CH2, correct? Now, add one more molecule of HBr here. Again, as per Markovnikov rule, negative part will go to that carbon which has lesser number of hydrogen. So, in this case, your final outcome here is going to be CH3CBr, Br, single bond CH3. In short, it is nothing but 2 comma 2 dibromopropane. Yeah. So, definitely of all these options, your option A is going to be your correct answer. I hope this is very much clear. Option B also will not give you 2 comma 2 because bromine is already associated with the first carbon, right? So, it will not give you 2 comma 2 dibromopropane, right? Okay. So, moving on with the next question here. Next is HBr reacting with CH2 double bond CH OCH. So, basically there is methoxy group which is present, methoxy ethene. Under unhydrous condition, now this is very important, under unhydrous condition at room temperature, okay. So, you have been given the options here. So, first is ethanol and CH3Br. Second one is bromoethanol and uh, methanol. Next one is you are having methoxy group along with that bromine as well. So, here you are having two bromo methoxy ethane and finally, you are having bromine which is attached at the first carbon here. Now, understand that it is unhydrous conditions. Now, because it is unhydrous conditions, this particular compound does not get hydrolyzed and that is the reason here the addition is going to take place, okay. Now, when, it, when we com come across the addition taking place for HBr, so let us say here you are having CH2, double bond CH, single bond OCH3. Now, H plus and of course Br minus, right? H plus and Br minus. So, these lone pairs of elect or these pi electrons should be given to H plus. So, you are going to have a carbocation formation, yes or no? Now, when it comes to carbocation formation, either the positive charge will go on to this carbon or it will go on to this carbon, right? So, let us suppose if I am considering this CH2 single bond CH2 single bond OCH3 and let us say there is a positive charge on this particular carbon, right? Or Another possibility of carbocation is CH, uh, CH3, single bond CH with a positive charge and of course, you are here having OCH3 group, right? Now, you need realize that the second case, this particular carbocation is more stabilized and because it is more stabilized, first of all, it is secondary carbocation and moreover, it is going to be resonance stabilized. Why? Because these lone pairs of electrons could be shifted here. If these electrons are shifted here, we can say that it is going to be CH3 single bond CH double bond OCH3 with a positive charge on carbon without any doubt, right? So, these two are the resonating structure. Now, it may be stable. Why? Because the octet of carbon is getting completed here, right? So, because here this particular carbocation is more stabilized, 
this its formation will be favored and because of that bromide ion then will come and attack at this carbon so second carbon right so definitely here your answer should be d right i hope you got the clear understanding yeah so here you have to talk in the context of what is intermediate carbocation which is generated and its stability yeah the next one the structure of the major product which is formed in the following reaction now this is the reaction here so here you are having benzyl chloride basically and at the meta position you are having iodine which is attached all right now you are treating with the sodium cyanide in dimethyl formamide so basically this is the reaction being, being used here now definitely you will realize here that nacn is capable of generating cn minus ion which is going to act as a nucleophile so one thing is clear that here it is going to show nucleophilic substitution reaction so this nucleophile cn negative either it can attack at this carbon so that this uh, chlorine will go off this is one possibility or another possibility is what uh, cn negative can attack this carbon so that this iodine will go off right now the point here is if cn minus is attacking at this particular carbon right and cl is going off it will give rise to basically a carbocation which is going to be resonance stabilized remember that so in the first case the reaction may follow follow sn1 mechanism in the second case you know where if cn minus by any chance is attacking this carbon where in iodine will be given off we know that aryl halides do not undergo nucleophilic substitution reaction so easily isn't it so it will be very difficult for cn minus to attack this carbon and get rid of this i why because even if the carbocation is formed it will not be stabilized phenyl carbocation so sn1 anyway is ruled out and for sn2 also breaking of this particular bond will be difficult right so here substitution at iodide you know at this particular position is not possible however definitely chlorine can be substituted by cn negative because of the sn1 mechanism here right so your product here we can say it will be iodine is definitely still at the para position and here instead of cl you will have cn okay right so definitely here your answer is d hope you got the clear understanding it is an example of nucleophilic substitution reaction the next question two methyl butane on reacting with bromine in presence of sunlight now understand this is two methyl butane and you are reacting with bromine in sunlight the moment you come across the term sunlight basically it means it is involving free radical mechanism okay now if i'm talking about the free radical mechanism obviously free radicals will be generated right so if i consider here uh, ch3 c ch3 h ch2 ch3 okay this is 2 methyl butane here you are having bromine reacting with it and of course in presence of sunlight so because there is sunlight from here bromide free radicals will be generated and these bromide free radicals okay will be able to extract the hydrogen okay now the point here is if you notice if this bromide free radical is extracting this hydrogen okay this will lead to formation of tertiary carbon free radical which is obviously the most stable one right so here we can say that this particular tertiary carbon free radical which is there will then be attacked by another br free radical and you will get bromine position at the second carbon so your final outcome here is going to be CH3 C CH3 Br CH2 CH3 simple straightforward correct so basically we can say here it is 2 bromo 2 methyl butane 
2 bromo 2 methyl butane. So definitely here your answer is C, 2 bromo 2 methyl butane. I hope this is clear. Next question here is reaction of molecule of HBr, one molecule of HBr with one molecule of 1,3 butadiene at 40 degrees Celsius, very important, at 40 degrees Celsius. It will give you predominantly 1 bromo 2 butene under kinetically controlled conditions, 3 bromo butene under thermodynamically controlled conditions, 1 bromo 2 butene under thermodynamically controlled conditions, and finally, 3 bromo butene under kinetically controlled conditions. Yeah? Now, see, understand first and foremost thing here. Let's draw the structure of 1, 3 butadiene. So, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Right? Now, definitely it is a conjugated system, right? Now, when it is reacted with HBr, first of all, when it is reacted with HBr, can we say here that because there is a conjugation present, it will give rise to structures like this. Let's suppose these electrons are shifted here, right? So that these electrons can shift here, right? So its resonating structure could be what? There will be a double bond here there will be a negative charge on this carbon and there is a positive charge on this carbon, yes or no? Now one thing is clear that we are treating with what HBr, so H, Br, H plus and Br minus. So the negative part of the reagent which is Br minus here, right, it will be attracting this positive center without any doubt. And hence, we can say here that Br negative is going to attack this carbon so that H plus obviously will be attacked by this carbon, right? So the product which we are going to get here is going to be double bond here and there is definitely CH3 group now and to this you are having bromine which will be attached. So if I, if I name this product it is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, right? So it is 1 bromo, 2 butene. So definitely my answer either is option A or option C because rest of the options like B and C they are saying it is 3 bromo butene which is not possible. So either it is A or C. Now the question mark is we have to determine whether this particular reaction is kinetically controlled reaction or thermodynamically controlled reaction, right? Now if you notice that this particular reaction is carried out at a temperature at 40 degrees Celsius which is higher than the room temperature and that's the reason it is going to be a thermodynamically controlled reaction, thermodynamically controlled condition, okay? So your option C is going to be your correct answer. If you are taking the relatively lower temperature, then things will be different, okay? But because we are having 40 degrees Celsius higher than the room temperature, we say it is thermodynamically controlled condition and hence option C is your correct answer here, right? All right. The next question here is the reaction of chloroform with alcoholic KOH and para toluidin. Now reaction of chloroform right here, it is a typical reaction of chloroform in uh, KOH solution, alcoholic KOH solution. It is called as carbylamine reaction. Okay, what is it called? Carbylamine reaction and of course this reaction is given uh, you know, positive by only primary amines. So, if I am considering here, para toluidine means here obviously you are having CH3 group, here you are having NH2 group. Now, we are treating with chloroform CHCl3 in KOH medium, okay, alcoholic medium of course. So, what happens is, this particular substance wherein NH2 group is there, it gets converted, this NH2 group gets converted into isocyanide group, okay? So the structure here which will be formed is going to be this. Okay, isocyanide. And it is actually a foul smelling substance, right? So this particular compound is called as carbylamine. So if you look at of all these options, Option D is going to be your correct answer, right? Isocyanide group, uh, which is present in the para position of this toluene. So this is a carbylamine reaction, which is given by obviously primary amine. So here you have aniline, which is capable of reacting with alcoholic solution of chloroform. 
All right. So moving on with the next question here. Choose the major product of the reaction. Now, here you have been given this particular alcohol. It is a secondary alcohol first and foremost thing. Okay. It is undergoing dehydration with the help of 85% uh, H3PO4. Okay. So if it is getting dehydrated, obviously we are going to get alkene out of it. Okay. So first and foremost thing, let's try to write the structure of this uh, compound. So here you are having CH3, C, CH3, CH3, C, OH, H and of course CH3. This is the structure which is given to us, right? Now obviously it will involve beta elimination. So if this is alpha carbon, so this is going to be your beta and this is also going to be your beta, right? Clear? And this leads through uh, the formation of the carbocation which is formed. Yes or no? Now the point here is, if this particular OH is gone, right? If this particular OH is gone, it is going to take away one of the hydrogen. Suppose if this hydrogen is gone, so you will be left with CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH, double bond CH2. Yes or no? Right? And the problem here is that there is no beta hydrogen here. If there is no beta hydrogen here, you will not be able to get any product. However, however, as I told you that this reaction leads through the formation of a carbocation. So it's intermediate carbocation which is formed here. Can I show its structure like this? CH3, C, CH3, CH3, CH with a positive charge and of course CH3 without any doubt, correct? Now if you notice here, this is the secondary carbocation which is formed here. But this particular secondary carbocation is attached to a tertiary carbon. And definitely we know that tertiary carbon is going to be, uh, tertiary carbocation is going to be more stable compared to what secondary carbocation. And hence, in this case, there will be a kind of something which you call as methyl shift. Okay. So this particular CH3 group will attack this carbon and hence your carbocation now is going to be CH3, C, CH3 with a positive charge CH, CH3 and of course CH3, right? And when there is a, this hydrogen is removed, okay, this hydrogen when it is removed, obviously you are going to get an alkene. So removal of proton will give rise to alkene like this CH3, C, CH3, double bond C, CH3 and of course CH3. Right? So definitely we can say here that this is your option, this is your product which is formed because of the uh, you know inter arrangement or you can say rearrangement of the carbocation being formed. Right? So option C will be your correct answer. Clear? Okay, moving on with the next question which one of the following is reduced with zinc amalgam and hydrochloric acid to give the corresponding hydrocarbon, okay? So you have ethyl acetate, acetic acid, acetamide and butanduone. Now answer for this particular question is a direct straightforward answer that is something about butanduone. It is a ketone which gets reduced by zinc amalgam in hydrochloric acid. It's Clemensen's reduction, yes or no? So butanduone on reaction with ZnHg in HCl is going to give you butane, right? So it was a simple, straightforward, uh, you know, kind of a name reaction you can say here, okay? The next question here, the major product which is obtained on the monobromination, now important thing here is monobromination, so you are introducing only one bromine into the structure. And the reagent which has been used here is bromine with FeBr3, okay? Of the following compound A is. Now first and foremost thing, you have been given a compound A here as this. So here you are having a CH3 group as well as methoxy group which is attached to the benzylene and they are met up to each other. Now, 
we very well know that electrophilic substitution, now this particular reaction involves the electrophilic substitution, right? Because when you consider Br2 in presence of FeBr3, it generates Br positive and that obviously gets attached to the benzene ring, yes or no? So Br plus definitely will go to that particular position or that particular carbon wherein the electron density will be relatively higher, yes or no? Now here OCH3 group definitely shows plus M effect. So OCH3 group is showing plus M effect, right? Because obviously of presence of lone pair of electrons on oxygen. And this CH3 group is also electron donating. It, it is showing its plus I effect, yes or no? So the point is because these both the groups are electron donating groups, we can say that they are ring activating groups, right? And because they are ring activating groups, definitely they are going to increase the electron density, they are going to increase the electron density at ortho as well as the para position. So when we consider the ortho position of methoxy group, it's these two, for CH3 obviously is these two, right, correct? And the para position for both the groups, it's for CH3 it is this, for OCH3 it is this. So one thing is very much clear that bromine can either come at this po position, this position or of course this position. Now this position will be difficult for bromine to reach out, why? because of the steric hindrance, because both the groups are bulkier groups on either side. So that is not possible, okay. So now we are left with this one as well as this one, okay. And now if you notice here, if bromine comes to this particular position, again because of the bigger size of the bromine and of course relatively bulkier group of CH3, OCH3, definitely again there could be repulsion taking place and hence that's the reason bromine will come at the para position of OCH3. So one of the reason is obviously because of the steric hindrance and the second thing is plus M effect of OCH3 will be more predominant, right? And that's the reason bromine will come and sit at the para position. So here you will realize that the product which will be obtained here is going to be uh, OCH3 here CH3 here and of course bromine at the para position, right? And that's the reason definitely I'm sure you'll be able to understand that your answer here is option B, clear? So now let's have a look at another question here, this one. Again, this is based on electrophilic substitution reaction. You have to arrange the following compounds in the order of increasing, increasing tendency to undergo electrophilic substitution reaction, right? It is quite obvious that all these compounds which are given to you, the groups which will be electron donating groups or ring activating groups, they will show higher reactivity towards electrophilic substitution reaction. Yes or no? Simple, straightforward, okay? Now, if we consider here NO2 group, it shows without any doubt minus M effect and minus I effect, right? Minus M and minus I. So definitely it is pulling the electrons from the benzene ring, so it is deactivating the benzene ring. Second structure is just benzene ring, no groups attached to it, right? Third one, you are having phenol, OH group which is attached to it, so it is showing plus M effect due to presence of oxygen or rather lone pairs of electrons on oxygen and obviously minus I effect as well. But plus M effect here is going to predominate, okay? Here it is plus M effect, here it is minus M effect, right? In the fourth case, you are having CH3 group, right? CH3 group is also showing your, you can say electron donating group because it shows plus I effect, right? And finally, you are having benzene ring which is attached to a system which is kind of a quaternary ammonium compound, right? Nitrogen with a positive charge. Now, here there could be uh, all the three hydrogen could be present. If all the three hydrogen are present, we can say simply it is anilinium ion, right? Or you could have three different groups or if there are methyl groups, it is quaternary compound. 
So one thing is clear that of all these structures, OH group, because it is donating its lone pair of electrons to the benzene ring, it is definitely going to, uh, you know, have a greater tendency towards electrophilic substitution reaction. Yes or no? Right? So, structure number 3 will have maximum reactivity followed by structure number 4 without any doubt. Correct? Why? Because CH3 group is also increasing the electron density. Okay? So, 3, then 4. Now, NO2 group, because it is pulling the electrons away from benzene ring, definitely it is not going to increase the electron density on benzene. In fact, it is going to decrease. All the more, this nitrogen with a positive charge on it, generally what happens is nitrogen has a lone pair which could be given to the benzene ring. But here nitrogen doesn't have any lone pair. In fact, it is having a positive charge. So it is going to pull the electrons from the benzene ring also with a greater force, right? So definitely these two are not going to have a higher reactivity towards electrophilic substitution. So what we are left with, obviously structure two, just benzene, right? Now here I need to compare first structure and the fifth structure, right? Now in the first structure you are having NO2, nitrogen doesn't have any charge as such as of now, but in this particular structure it is having a positive charge. So it is going to pull the electrons with a much more greater force, right? That's the reason. We can say that structure 1 will show little higher reactivity compared to structure 5, right? So if you notice here, of all these structures, it is phenol which shows maximum reactivity and structure 5 which shows least reactivity. And this particular order, you will be able to find it in option A, clear? So I hope you all got the clear understanding with respect to discussion based on the general organic chemistry as well as certain questions based on hydrocarbons and how to approach these kind of questions. Please remember the effects of resonance, inductive effect, hyperconjugation, stability orders of carbocations, carbon ions, free radicals and obviously these kind of electrophilic substitution reactions as well, okay? So that was all from my side for today. Take care, God bless you all.